Okay, so this is Faraday's legacy. Um, but it turns out uh, this idea of fields was much more important than Faraday had realized. And it took over 150 years for us to appreciate uh, the importance of, this field, of, of these fields. So what happened in these 150 years was that there was a small revolution in science. Uh, in the 1920s, uh, we realized that the world is very, very different from uh, the common sense ideas that Newton and Galileo had handed down to us centuries before. So in the 1920s, people like Heisenberg and Schrodinger realized that uh, on the smallest scales, on the microscopic scales, the world is much more mysterious and counterintuitive than uh, we ever really uh, imagined it could be. Uh, this, of course, is, is the theory that we now know as quantum mechanics. So um, there's a lot I could, I could say about quantum mechanics. Let, let, me, let me tell you one of the punchlines of quantum mechanics. Um, one of the punchlines is that uh, energy isn't continuous. Energy in the world is always parceled up into some little discrete lump. Okay, that's actually what the word quantum means. Quantum means discrete or, or lump. So the real fun starts when you try and take the ideas of quantum mechanics, which say that things should be discrete, and you try to combine them with Faraday's ideas of fields, which are very much continuous, smooth objects, which are waving and oscillating in, in space. So the idea of trying to combine these two uh, theories together is what we call quantum field theory. And here's uh, the implication of, of quantum field theory. Uh, the first implication is what happens for the electric and magnetic field. So Faraday taught us, and Maxwell later, that waves of the electromagnetic field are what we call light. But when you apply quantum mechanics to this, you find that these light waves aren't quite as smooth and continuous as they appear. So if you look closely at light waves, you'll find that they're made of uh, particles. They're little particles of light, and these are particles that we call the photon. Okay. The magic of this idea is that uh, that same principle applies to every single other particle in the universe. So there is spread everywhere throughout this room something that we call the electron field. Okay, it's like a fluid that fills this room and in fact fills the entire universe. And the ripples of this electron fluid, the ripples of uh, the waves of this fluid, get tied into little bundles of energy by the rules of quantum mechanics. And those bundles of energy are what we call the particle, the electron. All the electrons that are in your body are not fundamental. All the electrons that exist in your body are waves of the same underlying field. Okay? We're all connected to each other. It's like, you know, the waves uh, on the ocean all belong to the, the same underlying ocean. Uh, the electrons in your body are the ripples of the same field as the electrons in my body. Okay. There's more than this. Uh, there's also in this room two quark fields. And the ripples of these two quark fields give rise to what we call uh, the up quark and the down quark. And the same is true for every other kind of particle in the universe. There are fields that underlie everything. And what we think of as particles aren't really particles at all. They're waves of these fields tied up into little bundles of energy. Okay. So this is the legacy of Faraday. This is where Faraday's vision of of fields has taken us. There are no particles in the world. The basic fundamental building blocks of our universe are these fluid-like substances that we call fields. All right.